Science. Today you will be sent back in time with our Aperture Science handheld time travel device, as you can see here. We have a few bugs to work out in the system, but it still works pretty good considering how small it is. On today's expedition, you will be sent back 299 million years to the Permian period. Before we arrive at our program destination, we will be passing through some earlier periods. Here we are at the Tertiary Period. We have now entered the Cretaceous Period. We have just arrived at the Jurassic Period, and if you look out your window, you will be able to see a Brachiosaurus, which is a dinosaur that evolved to roam the Earth after the mass extinction of the Permian Period. We are nearing our destination as we pass through the Triassic Period. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the Permian period, when all the world's land masses joined together into a single supercontinent, Pangaea. During the Permian period, Pangaea is surrounded by a single large ocean that is called Panthalassa. In fact, the name Panthalassa means all sea. This was home to countless creatures, from single-celled organisms to many different types of bony fish with fan-shaped fins and thick, heavy scales. There are large reefs that were home to squid-like nautiloids and ammonoids. Ammonoids, coiled spiral shells, made it easier for them to get around, and they were quite popular during the Permian period. We know this because ammonoids are very common Permian fossils found today. The Permian was at the end of the Paleozoic era, and was followed by the Triassic period. At the beginning of the Permian period, the Earth's polar regions were covered with deep layers of ice. At the same time, the tropics were covered in swampy forests. As the temperatures increased, the glaciers melted away and the interior of the supercontinent became drier. During the Permian, there were many animals, including Edifosaurus, Dimetrodon, and other Polycosaurus, such as Ariops, Diplocolis, and Archosaurus. These were reptiles that were able to adapt because they could manage the big daily changes in temperature that would range from below freezing at night to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. That is correct, Gage. We haven't explained what kind of animals our travelers will encounter today when they go through the portal. You're right, Luke. Let's do that now. One of the animals you're going to encounter is the Dimetrodon. No, it's not a coin. The Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur either, but a polycosaur, and its name means two measure tooth. It is a sail-backed, meat-eating animal that walked on four sprawling legs with clawed feet. It was about 11.5 feet long and weighed roughly 550 pounds. The large sail-like flap of skin along its back was full of blood vessels that could absorb and release heat. Fossils of the Dimetrodon have been found in the United States, in Texas, and Oklahoma. Fossilized footprints of Dimetrodon have also been found in Canada. Now we're going to take a look at another common primitive amphibian that lived in the Permian period called Ariops. This meat eater had a wide, elongated skull with many sharp teeth and strong jaws. Ariops was about five feet long with a husky body and four short, strong legs and a short tail. Because of their short legs, Ariops may have been slow moving on land, but was still a fierce predator that ate small reptiles and amphibians. Scientists here at Aperture believe that it was probably faster in the water and that its main diet was fish. Now we're going to take a look at some flora and fauna. You might be surprised to find that you will recognize a few. One type of plant you will see is the conifer tree, which is one of the most common plants during the Permian period. The conifer is a gymnosperm, which means it is a seed-producing plant. The conifer has encased seeds, which offered protection to the future of the plant because the weather was so extreme. 
Since fires are common during the Permian period, the thick bark protects it very nicely. The conifer could grow up to 200 feet tall, and its height helped the seeds to spread farther before they landed on the ground. The next plant on our tour is the horsetail plant, which actually survived the max extinction at the end of the Permian period. The plant has hollow stems, like a straw that doesn't have any leaves. Instead, they have a small stem-like branches. One reason the horsetail plant probably survived is that it grew in almost any climate. But, but after learning about all this, you're probably wondering, if there was so much life back 280 million years ago, then what happened to it? Why isn't there a giant lizard walking down the street right now? Well, for various unconfirmed reasons, there was a mass extinction at the end of the Permian era. The Permian period brought the end of existence for much of early prehistoric life. Scientists have several theories that try to explain this mass extinction. Scientists who don't work at Aperture, that is. Some believe it might have been a series of volcanic eruptions that pumped so much debris into the atmosphere that it blocked out the sun and caused a significant drop in temperature. This also prevented plant photosynthesis and caused food chains to collapse. Other scientists point to rapid global climate changes that include periods of sudden warming and cooling, or it may have also been the result of a catastrophic release of methane gas stored under the seabed or a massive asteroid impact. We here at Aperture think it was probably a combination of all these events, but whatever the reason, we know it was the worst extinction event in the planet's history and wiped out nearly 90% of all marine species and 70% of land animals. It was even worse than the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs many millions of years later. The changes in the Earth's ecosystem made it possible for new life forms to evolve, but one thing is for sure, life on Earth would never be the same. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our trip to the Permian period. According to our calculations, you should be returning to Aperture on schedule. As you exit the facility, you will be put through a material emancipation grill that will vaporize any foreign material or unauthorized equipment. Please remember to remove all your personal belongings from overhead storage compartments. We would like to thank you for your participation and to show your our appreciation, we have baked you a cake. We hope you have enjoyed the trip and that you will make plans to go with us on your next adventure to the Permian period where we, we will be taking a look at... Bugs! That is correct, Gabe Boy. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that is... Luke. Luke! It's yours! Okay. It's f***ing it. Fine. Shhh! It's upside down. Upside. <laughs> Aperture Science Handheld Time Travel. Ow! That's correct, Gage. We haven't expected what kind of animals... Expected? <laughs> Working! Put it back! Working, working. Working. Um. We're we're experiencing a few minor technical difficulties involving a ship and a teleportation experiment. So, uh, good luck on your science adventure and. Um, Please remain seated and enjoy this video while we monitor the conditions to make sure it's safe to explore. Sit up straight. You guys are professionals. Do the three, two, one. Alright. Oh, the background!